scientists made a spectacular breakthrough in nuclear fusion a few days ago, and we are one step closer to solving the planet's energy problems once and for all. We take a close look at this breakthrough in this video and I also have exciting animations of the nuclear fusion process for you. So be sure to stay tuned to the end of the video and if you like it, I'd be galactically happy about a thumbs up and a comment, because we'll get the YouTube algorithm to show this important topic to even more people. Thank you and welcome. The power of the atom is incredibly powerful, as we can see in the film Oppenheimer in the cinema. And apart from atomic bombs, it can also be used to generate energy in power plants. There are two types of nuclear energy use, nuclear fission, which is used in current nuclear power plants, and nuclear fusion. In nuclear fission, uranium atoms are split to release energy. This is an incredibly efficient form of energy that is also CO2 neutral and therefore very environmentally friendly. In Germany, the political decision was made to switch off this low, CO2 form of energy and now to burn more coal and sell it to people as an energy transition. While every CO2 live map of Europe proves that Germany has become one of the biggest climate polluters in the world because of this, energy transition continent has risen. Clearly, nuclear waste is of course a disadvantage of nuclear power. In my opinion, however, the subject is overstated. Compared to other types of waste, nuclear waste takes up comparatively little space especially since modern technologies allow compaction and solidification of radioactive material. New technologies for reprocessing nuclear waste and reducing the half-lives of certain radioactive isotopes are also likely to come in the future. And advances in transmutation technology could result in dangerous isotopes being converted into less harmful or even stable elements. However, the German solution means that Germany is no longer a leader in this field of research either. The birthplace of Heisenberg, you have to imagine that. As icing on the cake, advanced reactors will soon be able to recycle the fuel stored in nuclear waste. From my point of view, a problem that you can absolutely accept if you are really interested in being more climate friendly and emitting less CO2. And not just telling people beautiful fairy tales that have nothing to do with reality. But feel free to write me your opinion on the nuclear phase out in the comments, was that a mistake or was it just right? I look forward to the discussion. Okay sorry, I got a bit off topic, when it comes to nuclear energy, I can never contain myself. But today it's not about nuclear fission, but about nuclear fusion. You can imagine nuclear fusion as the opposite principle. Light atoms are converted into heavier atoms to release energy. This is the same process that takes place in the plasma core of the sun, which provides our planet with a great deal of energy. If you could imitate this fusion process on Earth, that would probably be the solution to all of our energy problems. Using nuclear fusion could mean a virtually limitless source of energy, it would produce no long-term waste, it would emit no greenhouse gases, and it would pose no risk of core meltdown, or at least a very, very small one. That's why people have been dreaming of nuclear fusion power plants for a very long time, but until now it was just a dream. There's the old joke, fusion reactors are only 20 years away, like we said 30 years ago. Fusion itself is technically possible, but the problem is that you have to get a net energy plus at the end. In other words, a fusion power plant must produce more energy than it takes to trigger the fusion process. Makes sense too. The start of energy production is referred to as ignition and as early as 2021. There was an immense breakthrough at the National Ignition Facility, NIF for short, at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in the USA. The NIF used 192 laser beams that generate a total of 1.9 megajoules of energy over a few nanoseconds to trigger the fusion reaction. The fuel is contained in a sagger a few millimeters in diameter which, when heated by the laser beams, emits X-rays that heat and compress the fuel. So these are highly complicated processes which play in a tiny space. With this process that I have just described to you, a groundbreaking energy production of 1.3 megajoules was achieved on August 8, 2021. The highest value measured with the inertial method up to that point. That is, the level of generated energy closest to the ignition energy required up to that point. But I can hear some of you already confused asking. Inertia procedure? Is that what I do every morning before my first coffee? 
Let's briefly clarify these terms before we look at what even bigger breakthroughs have been achieved at the NIF. The start of energy production in nuclear fusion is called ignition. Prior to NIF success, the record was set by the joint European Taurus in England in 1997, where 16 megawatts of power was generated by magnetic fusion but required 23 megawatts to ignite. That means that with the best result that we had before the breakthrough at the NIF, you lost a lot of energy on a net basis. And what is the inertia method? There are two ways to achieve nuclear fusion, magnetic confinement, which uses powerful magnets to confine fuel plasma for very long periods of time, and inertial confinement, which uses very powerful, short laser pulses to compress the fuel and the fusion reaction to set in motion. This inertial confinement is the method used at the NIF, and it is very successful, because no good for niffings work there. I hate my life. I hate your life too, dude. Then the next milestone came at the end of 2022. The researchers at the NIF announced that they had met the so-called Lawson criterion for ignition. In 1955, the physicist John Lawson developed a set of criteria to determine when ignition such as the one just described has occurred. This is also called the Lawson criterion. It determines when a nuclear fusion reaction taking place in a plasma is self-sustaining. So self-sustaining in a macroscopic amount of fuel. To put it simply, the proportion of the released fusion power that remains in the plasma must be at least as large as the power loss of the plasma in order for the Lawson criterion to be met. And although no immense amounts of energy were generated in the NIF, it is an incredibly important step that for the first time the Lawson criterion has been achieved in a controlled reaction, i.e. the self-sustaining of nuclear fusion has succeeded. Of course, this is exactly what you need in future nuclear fusion reactors, because if you have to constantly add energy yourself to keep the nuclear fusion going, then you can save yourself the whole thing. In December 2022, researchers also managed to extract a net energy gain from nuclear fusion for the first time, albeit minimally. So researchers at the National Ignition Facility not only managed to set a world record for the energy output from a nuclear fusion experiment, but also created the first time a nuclear fusion reaction that could sustain itself. Absolutely revolutionary, the only problem was that they didn't manage to repeat the result afterwards. You know that, you pull off a really blatant move, like hitting the garbage can with a paper ball from 5 meters away. Then you want to show it to friends and it just doesn't work anymore. Until now, the next breakthrough came last week, on July 30th, Paul Rien, spokesman at the NIF, says, In an experiment conducted on July 30th, we repeated the ignition at the National Ignition Facility. Analysis of the results is still ongoing, but the experiment has yielded a higher yield than the last test. The exact results are still being kept under wraps, but the energy output must be higher than last time. In December 2022, the first positive energy balance in a fusion attempt, using lasers produced 3.15 megajoules of energy after the laser delivered 2.05 megajoules at the target. So with that we would have gotten out 150% of the energy that was put directly in. And now I can imagine, we're even talking about more than 200%, even if it's just speculation. The details will likely be discussed in a little more detail soon, as a statement from the lab reads. The analysis of these results is ongoing. As is our standard practice, we plan to report these findings at upcoming scientific conferences and in peer-reviewed publications. But I have to add a small downer, because although this is a huge success, it is far from being suitable for generating electricity. Because the results are a kind of milkmaid calculation. Because the 150% energy generation only includes the energy that the laser fires directly. But if you are completely honest, you would also have to factor in the indirect energy that the laser needs for its operation in the first place. And when you do that, the result looks a bit more sobering. Then we get an energy input of 322 megajoules. With an output of 3.15 megajoules, only just under 1% of the energy input would have been recovered. But I still think that these are immensely important steps towards successful, large-scale nuclear fusion. And the successful news is also piling up. At the NIF alone we have had at least three major successes since 2021 and looking 20 years into the future. I am optimistic that we will master nuclear fusion.
be sure to check out the video, it's also very exciting. And if you want to support my work, please visit the shop and get the new plush black hole that can become a white hole. Otherwise I would say see you in the next video. Have a good time folks.